Welcome back everyone. I'm getting ready to plug in this lemongrass plant here. Are you still not growing lemongrass? Why not? It's one of the easiest crops to grow. So many uses. You can make lemongrass tea, use it as a base for your soups, and regardless of where you live, how cold your winters get, you can easily grow this all year round just by pulling up a couple of the stalks at the end of your season before it gets too cold and placing them in a little jar of water like this. They'll go for months. This one has been in the jar for at least two months. And look at the roots, just a little bit of tap water, little indirect light coming from the kitchen window. And yes, you can grow this from seed, but here we are in the middle of April, time is of the essence. I'd suggest you go down to your local Asian market, pick up a few of these fresh stalks. They're very low cost. You can plant them directly in the ground or start them in a bit of water start growing your lemongrass now. Layering your plants is not only one of the best ways to maximize production in a smaller area, but it looks wonderful as well. Now, the best way to accomplish this is to determine the most southern and northern ends of your yard. The northern end, you're gonna want taller crops growing and stagger down as you head towards the southern side as the sun's gonna be coming from that southern direction. So if you had all your tall plants up front, you'd be effectively shading everything that's behind. Now I'm speaking to folks in the Northern Hemisphere, of course, it's the opposite on the Southern Hemisphere. But you can use this same technique and kind of stagger your plantings if you know where the sun's coming in, how it's hitting your property. So in this area, I've got a couple hollyhocks and these are gonna get several feet tall. And down here, I've got a little baby holly that I plugged in from a little seedling there. So we'll have three nice hollyhocks growing here with a backdrop of rosemary that's in bloom and some pomegranates on the pomegranate tree. And if we pan over here to the left, you can see I have this beautiful autumn olive bush. And check out the shade that's being created by this plant here. So we've got some dappled shade in this area. Lemongrass does well in full sun, but also in dappled shade. And the lemongrass is gonna get, I don't know, about three and a half feet tall and about three and a half feet wide, four feet wide. So. Taking that into consideration, I got to continue to look around here. Got a fava bean here. We've got a zucchini squash, which is going to spread out. So I think if I plug in my lemongrass right about here, it's going to look wonderful with all these other plants. And we're really going to occupy this whole space so that there's not too much dead area where weeds can start to pop up. Even with the mulch, we get weeds like bindweed poking up here and there. And the best way to combat unwanted plants like that is to occupy the space. So we'll just scoop back some of the mulch here. This is the kind of stuff that I've been using. There's no pine trees that grow over here, but I threw in some pine needles, other mulch, just natural materials the mulch on top. Whatever you have. Oh, wow. And then you get beautiful garden buddies like that night crawler there. I'm glad I didn't hurt them. So we'll just put them over there. Always a good sign to see the life in your soil like that. We'll just throw that lemongrass in there, I'll sprinkle a little bit of mycorrhizal inoculin in there, help those roots to really take off, reduce the transplant shock, not that lemongrass gets too shocked from moving around. Water that in really well, get rid of all the air gaps. And I really like that placement. That's going to look wonderful as everything here continues to grow out. The lemongrass bushes out. It creates a nice bit of life in the garden as the breeze comes in and it shimmers around. Now I've got something really cool I want to share with everyone. This is a new item I picked up that's going to make a huge difference in my gardening activities from this point on. And primarily, one of the main uses that you can use this for is to completely eliminate aphids almost instantly. So check this out. So this here is an electric spray bottle with a digital 
reader there. It tells you how much power is left in the rechargeable battery. You just plug this thing in and charge it up. And all you do is press this button. So nice. This would be nice in the summertime just to cool down. But you can adjust the spray. Now before I got this brand, I bought a different model. It was cheaper, but it only lasted a day. This one here is built more like a tank and it has the rechargeable battery, which is a huge bonus as the other one took four double A's. And before I share with you how you can use this thing to eliminate aphids once and for all in your garden, I wanna share with you another great benefit to this tool. It's so perfect for watering in small transplants and seedlings, whereas a watering can will often disturb the soil which can be a pain, especially when you got little seeds started. This just puts the perfect amount of water onto the surface, causing very little disturbance. So this is going to be my go-to now to water my seedlings and my little plant starts. And you can see on the top there, the reader is I still got 97% of my battery and I've used this quite a bit. Oh, I didn't see you under there, ladies. <laughs> now the pressure isn't quite strong enough to just simply blast the aphids off, but if we add in just one tablespoon of this neem oil extract, which is all natural, organic, comes from the neem tree, it's pressed out of the seeds, then not only are we gonna be able to rid our plants of aphid infestations, but it also is going to deal with white flies, spider mites, and different fungus problems, black spot, powdery mildew. So this sprayer doesn't work with pressure, it's just a motor that pumps out the water. That's why you don't hear a hissing when I pulled off the top there. So I just filled it up with water and it has a nice transparent opening here so you can see where you've reached the max point. And because this is a half a gallon, we just need one tablespoon. The neem oil is two tablespoons per gallon as directed on the bottle. Now, if you've been following along the channel, you know that my favorite way of dealing with aphids is to first just let nature take its course, let the weaker plants become attacked, but if it ever becomes too much of an issue, I like to blast them off with water. However, applications like this do have a use, especially for people just getting started gardening. They don't have enough diversity in their garden to help with the natural predators that come in and can help to balance out the whole system. So something like this, all natural can work. Word of caution before you use this, do not spray if you see bees flying around. If you do that, you're gonna hurt the bees and that's the absolute worst thing that you could be doing for your garden and for the planet. With that being said, I noticed an issue on my roses here. We've got aphid and white flies coming in on my new rosebuds here, causing an issue, so. So that's all there is to it. That's gonna take care of the problem. Sometimes you may need to come back about a week later and give it another shot. But neem oil is a safe, effective treatment. You can use it on house plants, all types of ornamental plants, roses, vegetables, fruit trees. Use sparingly. Make sure that you're not spraying at a time when there's bees out. And I recommend trying the most natural approach first, trying to diversify your garden, bring in plants that are companions to some of the other plants that bring in beneficial insects like the ladybug, which is a natural predator to the aphid, as is the praying mantis. Well, that's gonna do it for now, my friends. I appreciate you all watching. Have yourself a great rest of the day. Until next time, this is Dan from plantabundance.com. Take care, I'll be talking to you again soon.